everybody, Zeev Simon here, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to talk about the flap design for the case I showed you in the previous video. If you didn't see it, go back and watch it. This is a patient referred to me by Dr. Rick Glassman, and we extracted an upper left central incisor because of a root fracture, grafted the site, and in the previous video, I showed you some of the deficiencies in the site in regards to the gingival margin and a slight loss of the uh, papilla, both uh, the mesial and the distal. And I talked to you about the different factors that I'm looking into when I'm planning my flap for the case, and that included the tissue quantity and quality, but also what type of treatment protocol I'm using for this case. And I mentioned to you the three options that we have. We can go with a two-stage, a one-stage unloaded with a heating abutment, or a one-stage loaded with a provisional crown. And Really, there's no right or wrong. Every case is different. There are different factors that come into play and also your experience and comfort level. But what's important is that you have a sound rationale, reasoning, why you're choosing a certain approach. And I hope these videos will provoke some discussion and more questions during the webinar on the best implant flap designs coming soon. For this patient who is traveling quite a bit and <laughs> has proven to us that he disappears for a year or two, at the time, I felt that if we can place the previously bonded crown right after the surgery, that would be ideal for this patient, and it will give him the comfort and the aesthetics he was used to in the past two years. If you remember, this patient uh, had the tooth extracted over two and a half years uh, before the day of the procedure. So I decided with, to go with a two-stage approach where I'm going to place the implant under the tissue and uncover uh, a few months later, uh, it is possible to place a healing abutment, but I typically don't like to have a healing abutment under a permanent restoration. I find that it's uh, very hard to keep clean and it's detrimental in regards to bone loss. So either I go for a two-stage approach where I bury the implant and uncover later, or I pl place a provisional at the time of surgery. Now, this does not mean that a one stage with or without a provisional is not possible, not doable, and not advantageous. Uh, it only means that I chose a two-stage approach for the reasons I mentioned before. And if that's the case, what would be the best flap design for two-stage approach? If you look at one of the challenges in this case, you see that the tissue on top of the ridge is very hyperemic, very inflammatory, and also very thin. This type of tissue is uh, obviously prone to bleeding, but also to tearing, and it's very hard to manipulate it. And that's uh, pretty common for pontic sites, and you have to be extra careful. So if I'm planning a two-stage approach, my preferred incision would be actually the good tissue quality, more palatal, for two reasons. Number one, it'll be easier for me to reflect the flap uh, without risk of tearing and less bleeding, of course. But number two, when it comes down to suturing, it'll also be easier because I'll engage good tissue quality. The extension of this flap will be sparing the papilla on the mesial and the distal for obvious reasons and extending it slightly to the buckle with the two vertical releasing incisions to give me enough exposure to place the implant and then suture the flap back. So when you reflect this type of flap, you want to be very, very careful. You're starting with the good tissue quality on the, on the uh, palatal aspect, but as you get to the top of the ridge, the tissue becomes very thin, very fragile. So make sure that your incisions are all the way to bone, that you're taking your time to reflect this tissue very carefully making sure it doesn't tear. If it tears, you're in big trouble because the palatal extension of it is basically going to slough off. It's not difficult to do. You just need to take your time and just be aware that the tissue is fragile. That's why we started the incision more to the palate. Now, in this case, I also trimmed back the surgical guide so I don't need to reflect the big flap and that allows me to position the implant according to my plan. Follow the surgical protocol all the way to guiding the implant into position, placing a cover screw, and basically then suturing. Now, I call this type of flap a zebra flap because of the stripes that are very obvious on the flap, the part that is more keratinized and attached versus the part that is more hyperemic, thin, 
and fragile, just to remind you that when you have a zebra flap, each part of the flap responds differently to the pressure from the elevator and the blade, so handle it with care. Now, because we designed the flap in a certain way, now it's relatively simple to engage sutures in the good tissue quality part of the flap and, of course, the vertical releasing incisions. I hope you found this video useful. Feel free to share it with other dentists. I hope I made a point why I used a certain flap design with the zebra pattern. And in the next video, I'm going to show you the implant and covering technique and how this case was completed. I'm going to share a lot more of these techniques in the upcoming webinar on the best implant flap designs. I look forward to seeing all of you there. That's why I'm preparing all these videos to get you into the mood and increase your knowledge so when we get to the webinar, it'll be so much more educational for you and you can make the best out of it. So if you didn't register yet, go to surgicalmasterwebinar.com, register, and I'm going to see you at the webinar, but also in the next video where I talk about the uncovering of this case. So I'll see you soon. Ziv Simon here, I'm the creator of Surgical Master. So you created this great implant site and you're ready for the procedure. And now you're a little bit insecure about what is the best way to handle the soft tissue during the surgery. Should you reflect the flap? Should you go flapless? Should you preserve the papilla? And if yes, what is the best way to do it? And in general, what is the best way to handle the soft tissue in a particular implant case? If you have these questions, you're not alone. Many doctors are a little bit insecure and have many dilemmas when it comes to the soft tissue handling around dental implants. I'd like to invite you to a webinar that will answer all of these questions and will help you to be better in soft tissue management during implant surgery. I'm going to talk about what I think are the best ways to handle the soft tissue during implant surgery go to surgicalmasterwebinar.com to sign up. Once you sign up, you'll get a confirmation and some additional information and resources that will prepare you for the webinar so you can maximize your learning experience. In this webinar, I'm going to talk to you about the different soft tissue techniques that I use in my practice. I'm going to talk to you about flapless surgery and what is the best way to do that, but I'm also going to give you some options for flaps and the exact incision outline. I'd like to make it very useful and practical for you so you can apply it in your practice. To sign up, go to surgicalmasterwebinar.com. All you need is an internet connection, a computer, a tablet, or a phone, and you're in. I'm going to show you how all of this works, and I know this is going to be very useful and practical to you. I'll see you at the webinar on the best implant flap designs. See you then.